In today's video, we're going to be reviewing what happened at the World Brisa Championship, and we're going to be hypothesizing about Diego Campos's potential score sheet by doing our own little mock-up score sheet to just give us an idea of, on where the points might have been for him. So stay tuned. All right, everyone, Jay here. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to be getting right into Diego's score sheets from the World Brisa Championship. Now, remember, these are just my own hypothetical simulations based on the video that we watched last week. We're going to give them some scoring and talk about it. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. You know, we're looking at Diego at 511.5 points, and I thought, you know, wonder, I wonder what we could do to... Scoring is done on a, on a range of 0 to 6 points, and we can do half points between 1 and 5. We also assign descriptors to each of the scores to help judges and help competitors think about how to score, how to describe the scoring, right? So this is our valuation scale. Yes and no get 1 or 0 points each, 0 through 6. Unacceptable for zero, one is acceptable, two is average, three is good, four is very good, five is excellent, and then six is extraordinary. Now you can give half points, as you've seen, between one to six. We don't do half points, like a 0 0.5, we don't do that because zero being acceptable and one being acceptable, there's no halfway between unacceptable and acceptable, right? And then, of course, six is perfect. It's a top score, so you don't, there's nothing over six. So it's, it's zero, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6. And that's the range of, of scoring that's available to the judges. The majority of the scores for the sensory sheet are based on the actual taste. As you can see here, taste experience, accuracy of flavor descriptors, tactile experience, accuracy of tactile descriptors. These are things that only the judges can, can really assess because they're tasting it and having that experience. We can only surmise. I'm just gonna surmise based on my experience, but with no real grounding in what has transpired. There are three flights of drinks that the sensory judges must review. There's espresso, a milk drink, and then a cigarette drink of their own creation. And they serve four drinks to four sensory judges that use this score sheet to do the evaluation. The first part, espresso evaluation, the first category is crema. We're looking for the presence of crema across the entire top of the drinking vessel. And that crema can be of any color, just as long as it's there and is whole and intact, meaning that there's no holes and no black from the coffee protruding through. From my perspective in the video, it's, it did look like there was crema, so I said yes. Now, taste experience, I'm just gonna, you know, he won, so I'm, I'm decided, I thought that he would probably get a higher score here. I extrapolated the a score of 4.5, which is very good plus. And then here for accuracy of flavor descriptors, I'm again extrapolating here, four, very good. Tactile experience, 3.5, good plus. Accuracy of tactile descriptors, Four, very good. And then functional correct espresso vessel use. Really, this means can you actually drink out of the serving vessel? So we say yes. And so now, if you remember here, we were talking about taste experience, 4.5. As you can see to the left of it, there's a two times multiplier, meaning that we take that 4.5, we multiply it by two, and that gives us a nine point total for that. Accuracy of flavor descriptors, we gave that a four. We're gonna multi that, multiply that by a factor of three for 12 points. Tactile experience, 3.5, multiply by two, seven. Accuracy of tactile descriptors, we give that a four, times two is eight. And then functional correct, yes, so that's one. So now in this section alone, we have this, this particular section, we're giving Diego 38 points. So we move on to milk beverage, and we're looking at, first off, at the visual, right? Then what are we looking for, foamy, smooth, silky, velvety foam with good contrast, right? Nice contrast between the red, the, the, the reddish brown crema and the white milk. Now in the, in the one video that I was watching, I only got to see one judge's visual and it wasn't very nice. It was really a lot of brown, not really well poured. The texture was okay, was good, but everything else was just good. Nothing, nothing you know, actually probably less than good, you know, probably just, yeah, good. Average, average to good. So my score for that was 2.5, so average plus. Taste experience, we're gonna extrapolate that and say that was a three, so good. Accuracy flavor receptors, good with a three again. And then functional vessel, yes. So here we, we've got three and three with both of those having 
factors of 2, so we've got 6 and 12. So we've got uh, 15.5 points in this section. Then moving on to the signature beverage evaluation now, here's really part of where Diego really shone. First category, well explained, introduced, prepared. He was just excellent. Like everything you wanted to know that you could know about it, he was telling you all that he could beyond just the, the origin of the coffee and why he wanted to do this. You know, he talked about, you know, he was using a frozen cherry reduction of 12 grams, 24 grams of a pineapple starfruit reduction. Or he did another eugenioids reduction with eight grams. You know, he talked about how it all goes together how you put it to how you assemble it and why he did a lot of these ingredients for me that was a 5.5 you know excellent plus then the next one appealing presentation yeah it looked nice functionality yeah that worked well creativity synergy with coffee this is one of those things where like it's kind of a two category kind of thing how creative is the drink and how synergistic are the ingredients together like do the ingredients come together to perform a better whole Again, these are things that really are super dependent on you actually tasting the drink. Again, we're going to extrapolate that. I'm giving it a 3.5, so good plus. And then for taste experience, give them the same thing. Good plus. Accuracy of flavors, good plus. Like, I'm personally interested to try it, but I don't, you know, I'm just guessing that it's probably right around that range. So those scores together, the 3.5s and the taste experience and accuracy of flavor descriptors, both get multiplication factor of two. So now we have 25 points for that section. And then moving on, barista evaluation, customer service skills, presentation professionalism. I mean, he's, man, he's up there. He's way up there. Excellent. Just excellent. Just well composed, very professional. The presentation was just on the money. That for me was a, a good five points. Then attention to detail, all accessories available. I mean, looking at what's available to the judges on the tables, what he's presenting and offering. I mean, really that's where the question is like, what else could they want? What else could they have needed? To my mind, that would be a six. So we gave him a six for that. So that's the highest score. And then we have appropriate apparel, yes or no. Criteria for appropriate apparel is, are they wearing an apron or not? If they're wearing an apron, the answer is yes. If they're not wearing an apron, the answer is no. And so he was wearing an apron, so we say yes. So for that section with uh, five, six, and then one point, we've got 12 points. And then here towards the, at the very bottom, judges total impression. The overall view of barista's presence correlating to taste scoring and presentation. So what that means is that it's kind of an overall evaluation of his of the barista's performance, but it's not necessarily a average of the scoring. The total impression should be informed by the score sheet. Like, it would be very difficult to say he's a six when you haven't really given any kind of six scoring throughout his presentation. In this particular case, I thought he was excellent. Excellent. Just excellent. I, I would have given him five in this category. You can notice here to the left of it, it says four times. So it's a four times multiplier of that five, meaning it's a 20 point total. Now, if we add all those together, we have 110.5 points on the score sheet. And so we're just going to take that and multiply it by four. Just extrapolate that out to four judges, which gives us 442 points on the sensory side. There's a technical judge that watches the way that, that the competitor does their thing and evaluates that. And that score sheet is worth 71 points. So we're just going to presume that he was perfect because he looked solid on the money. So we're going to presume 71 points for that. So the 442 plus the 71 points gives us 513 points, which is very close to his finished score of 511.5. So according to my mock-up here, we're only, we're a point and a half over where he finished. So I think it's safe to say that he's somewhere in that, in the range that I hypothetically, what his score sheets may have looked like. Of course, we don't know because we've never seen them. Perhaps Frederico will share that with us one day and we can see, or Diego, if you want to share it with us, we'd love to be able to look at them and evaluate and talk about them. That, that's kind of how we look at the different score sheets. And these are the competitors. They did a great job. If you have the chance, World Coffee Championships on YouTube, you can see all the different competitors that are competing. So any of your favorite braces that you want to see or favorite countries, you can watch them here online. It's, it's a good time. It's a good time. If so if you enjoyed this little tidbit about the World Barista Championship and have any questions or comments about coffee in general, join me at the Spur Coffee channel here on YouTube Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m. where we do a live stream at 10 a.m. Eastern Time every Tuesday. So come on and join us there. We'd love to have you. And uh, if you have the time, don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to have you. If you have any need for coffee, please try our coffee at spurrowcoffee.com. We've got a great range of uh, coffees there for you. 
all personally sourced by myself. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time. Mm -hmm.